Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm extremely excited, and I'm also extremely nervous. I purchased a Gigabyte Aorus 4K OLED monitor, and it's a huge beast. It's the uh, FO48U from Newegg, refurbished. I know. <laughs> So right there, that's risky. The other thing is it's shipping all the way from California to New York. So, you know, UPS, they throw their boxes around. Who knows? Hopefully it'll arrive in one piece at least, and hopefully it won't have a bunch of dead pixels. You know, the price was too good to turn down. There's a 30-day return policy, so I can always return it. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. A lot of people say the auto dimming will drive you crazy and you can't turn it off. But I'm using mainly Pro Tools and Final Cut. So I'm not really using it for Word documents and things of that nature all the time. This is a 1440 BenQ, and then I've got two ASUS monitors on either side that are 1080s. I'm guessing I'm still gonna have to keep the two 1080 monitors because I like to have things spread out, and I can't imagine just spreading things out on one screen is gonna do it for me. But uh, I'm gonna have to rearrange my whole setup here, and hopefully I can put the display slightly behind the studio monitors instead of in front. I think where this display is now it's going to be too close i'll wait for the ups guy the first thing i'm going to do is just plug it in and not set it up here because if there's something immediately wrong with the display i don't want to tear down my whole setup because i got work going on so i'm going to just plug it in see if it works make sure there's no dead pixels hopefully there won't be and we'll take it from there so i will see you after the UPS man gets here. Please don't be broken, don't have dead pixels, be in one piece. And here comes Mr. UPS man, right on time. And when Mr. UPS man handed me the box, this is what it looked like. It was open, not even a piece of tape on the top of it. Come on, new egg, you can do better than that. Holes punctured, the box looks like it's been dragged through hell. Look at this thing. So if this monitor actually works, I will be surprised. So I got it upstairs in the studio. We're gonna unbox it, see if it's cracked or broken. You gotta pull out these little plastic tabs at the bottom of the box, push in the little clips and then pull them out so you can lift the top off. Then you gotta remove the side pieces. And uh, yeah, let's just jump forward. So here it is. I finally got the legs on. The screws were not included in the box. I guess that's part of buying something refurbished, new egg. I don't know. But uh, I had to go to Lowe's and find the right screws. But anyway, that was done. And there she is. She boots. She lights up. She looks nice. I am going to inspect it now to make sure there's no dead pixels or any real issues with it. But at least the screen wasn't cracked, you know, the way the box looked. These things are very thin, so you don't know. And we'll just look at my old setup one more time before we scan to the new setup. And here it is in all its OLED glory. 48 inches of deep blacks and vibrant colors. And the stand it's on right now is temporary. I'm getting a standing desk where I can set the height exactly where I want it with my speakers on the desk as well. I think that's going to be a great addition to the studio. So seeing as this is a monitor and not a television, it comes with two USB 3.0 ports, a USB upstream port which connects the monitor to your computer, which you also use to update the firmware. You get a USB Type-C port which can also connect to a laptop and you can use that as a second or third input and it also acts as a KVM switch. Then you have DisplayPort 1.4, that's what I'm using, and you have two HDMI 2.1 ports, a headphone jack, and an audio line out. Now the speakers in this monitor are not great. You know, if they're all you got, then you can use them, but they sound pretty hollow. And of course I have very nice studio monitors, which I use to listen to everything. And remember how I said I was gonna check it out before I set it up, which I did but I didn't notice this until after I set it up. There are some dead pixels in the upper left-hand corner, 
quite a few of them. They're just black. You don't even notice the corner. You only notice that little bit above the Apple logo. But the reality is it looks much worse in this photo than it does in real life. And I called New Egg, told them about it, and they took $20 off for not giving me the screws, which was pretty generous. And then they took another $50 off. So I got this monitor, which is normally $800, for $489 before tax. Pretty good deal. So here's my new setup. I got the standing desk from Amazon, 63 inches. Once again, it came slightly damaged. The top of the desk, the fiberboard part, had a couple of dents in it. Not a major deal, but Amazon took a hundred bucks off and there was a $50 coupon when I bought this. So I got the whole desk for a hundred dollars, which is pretty amazing. And I can adjust the height to get it exactly where I want it for my speakers and the display. And it can handle the weight, no problem. It's very solid. I'll leave a link in the description for the table. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the refresh rate and the resolution. I'm running it in 4K, obviously. I have an RX 6800 XT. It's running off the display port. You can also run it off the HDMI 2.1 port. I don't really know what the benefits are between the two. Supposedly HDMI 2.1 is more compressed. I don't know if that's true. I gotta kinda look into it some more, um, but I really haven't noticed any difference between the two. The other thing is the scaling. So obviously if you have a 4K monitor, everything is super small on the display as far as text goes, even when it's a huge 48 inch monitor. You have to scale your text. So right now I have larger text selected and it says 1920 by 1080, which is, you know, 1080p. It makes your 4K monitor look like a 1080p monitor, but it's still in 4K, it's just your apps and your text will look like it's on a 1080p monitor size-wise. As it shows you in the system profiler, UI looks like 1080 or 1440, but the reality is it's still 4K, it's just your user interface is being scaled to different sizes and it's basically the sharpest text you're gonna get. You see as you go up, the next one is 1440. Using a scaled resolution may affect performance. Now I'm not quite sure what performance it affects, but what it does do is it upscales your 4K to 5K as far as the software is concerned, and then scales it back down to 1440. I haven't really noticed any performance hit whatsoever when I do it in 1440. I'm still kind of going back and forth between which I like better. You can also see I have HDR selected, automatically adjust the display to show high dynamic range content. It'll display HDR when it detects HDR. Once you turn it on on the Mac, the monitor is always in HDR mode. It does not switch back and forth. You're basically leaving it to the Mac to display the SDR and the HDR content. The other thing you should do is run it in dark mode because anything that's white, as I said before, will darken the screen some. So apps running in dark mode, the whole computer itself running in dark mode, it's just better for the longevity of the screen. And the other thing you want to do is you want to hide your dock and you want to hide the menu bar because you don't want the menu bar burning into your OLED. And if it's up there all the time, guess what? you're gonna have burn in is my guess. I do a lot of different things. I have a screensaver kick in at 10 minutes. I have the monitor sleep at 20. I have the background photo on the main monitor change every five minutes. That kind of keeps the dimming at bay as well. I also set my 1080p monitor to be the main monitor so that my hard drives show up on the desktop there and they're not showing up on the Aorus. That way, again, preventing burn-in possibilities. So you can see I have 120 hertz running on this monitor. Initially, I could not get that with macOS. I'm on Monterey 12.6.6, and all I could get was 60 hertz. It would not go to 120. 120 did not show up. So then I started scouring the internet and I got Switch Res X, which actually has been around for a long time. And you're able to go in there and make a custom 
resolution and then inject that into your Max OS and then it'll just show up like it should in the Max display menu settings. So I'll leave a link in the description for Switch Res X. So OLEDs have two different dimming features to help prevent burn-in. One is, as you can see, I'm moving this web page around and going from a small white background to full screen. And when you go full screen, it gets darker. The white gets darker, it turns sort of like a gray. There's another dimming feature where if you just have a desktop photo up and you don't touch your monitor for five minutes, the screen will dim. After 10 minutes, it'll dim again even further and so on. So if you're doing mission critical color grading, photo editing, the OLED may not be the best choice for your main monitor to do that kind of work. So you can go into the service menu of this monitor by unplugging the monitor from power waiting 15 seconds, plugging it back in, and when you're plugging it back in, you first want to hold down the little menu button at the bottom of the screen. There's that little toggle switch. You wanna push that towards the back of the monitor, then plug it back in, and then you will see in the on-screen display, the letter F appears in the upper left-hand corner. So that allows you to toggle up to the F. As you can see, I'm doing it there. It just lit up in orange. And bingo, we're in the service menu. Now you just click through the different settings. And I notice when you go to sRGB, it really brightens up the monitor. Um, and you can exit there. And I'm not gonna say it removes the dimming completely, but it does seem to minimize it. And I also set the energy setting to standard and CEC. And honestly, it still dims, maybe not as much. So you have to play around with those settings. I have not found it to entirely turn off the dimming. And the reality is it's there for a reason, to prevent burn-in. Okay, so I know I talked about a lot of sort of the negatives with the dimming and things of that nature, but this display is amazing. It's the best monitor I've ever had. I had the Apple 30 inch cinema display when that came out. Huge waste of money. Should have put it in Apple stock. But anyway, um, the reality is, is this is the best monitor I've ever had. It's nicer than my BenQ. It's got the dark, dark blacks and really vibrant colors. The dimming issues are not really an issue for me. It might be for some, but again, this doesn't have to be your main monitor if you're doing photo editing. You could have another monitor on the side and then use this for playing back your photos to enjoying your content. And that's what it's really for. Uh, for me, having Pro Tools on a huge screen like that is great. I switch between the 1080p and the 1440 as far as text size goes. Um, I think I'm happy with the 1440 actually but I kind of go back and forth. I'm still messing around. I'm still learning things about this display. But if you have any questions or you have any comments, please do so in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up and I will see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.